Well, good afternoon, good morning. I guess we're somewhere in between right now. Uh, this is Jack from First Central, and uh, just want to say hi, good morning, and uh, I'm going to be bringing a daily scripture reading today from Ephesians 2. Um, how are you doing today? I, I hope that things are going relatively well. Um, a few days into this, um, it, it's going to be a few weeks um, as we try to find new normals and new um, schedules. Um, and I, I hope that you're taking the time during the week um, to carve out some time for prayer and for um, scripture. Um, we really, we need to do that. Um, it's what's going to ground us. Um, God is at work in us, um, but we need to respond to that. Um, and he wants to hear from you. Um, he says that cast your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Um, and we do that in prayer. And so we've talked to a number of people, Simka and I and um, various people at the church, Mark and um, Robin, about um, some of their worries or concerns. And um, this is a time in which you can you can be a light to somebody. You may not be able to go and visit with them, but you can reach out, uh, make phone calls. Uh, I've done some of that myself already. I'll be doing some again later today. Um, you can um, participate in uh, video conferences or whatever. I, I was part of a small group last night, actually, um, and it's something I'm trying to work out maybe for us here at First Central. The point is, is um, you have God in you, um, and He's with you, and uh, you can trust in Him, and then you can also be a light to others. So take some time to reach out to somebody today. And I'm going to read from Ephesians 2. Now, Ephesians chapter 2. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And therefore, remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcision, by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands, remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of two, so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near and those and, and through him, we both have access in one spirit to the father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord in him. You are also being built together in a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. This is the Word of God. 
And so this is really good news. Um, we were once dead, not terminally ill, not sick. Uh, we have this virus going around and it can make people pretty sick. And, and But this says that we were dead. But God, because of his great mercy and the love that which he loved us with, that when we accepted Christ, we were made alive with Jesus. And so we were far off. Um, Jew and Gentile both um, were um, separated at hostility with one another and with God. But God has come and made a way for all people to be reconciled to him through Jesus. And, and so now the question becomes is who's at work in you? Who's at work in you? Um, is it Satan and the flesh? There's, there's sort of this almost a test that goes on. It says like there's a change that happens inside of you. You were dead. You were following the desires of the flesh and you were following the course of this world. In other words, it's normal to be selfish when you're in that part of the world. But when we accept Christ, when we receive the mercy of God, it's unwarranted. It's not that we're good and chosen because we were worth it, but because of God's great love for us, he works in us. We're his workmanship, it said. And so moving from trying to desire, uh, fulfill our own desires or um, selfishness, we then turn our eyes to God. We then turn our eyes to each other. God is at work in us to be a people of mercy and grace that just the same way as he is. Um, God is at work in us to be um, God honoring toward him because he deserves all of our honor and praise and to be others focused. Um, he is merciful and wants us to dispense mercy and grace. He wants us to do good works. He wants us to be reconcilers because he's a reconciler. And so we learn to humble ourselves because he teaches us. Um, and he's doing this in terms of bringing all of us together into one body. And he's talking about the formation of the church um, in Christ, making one group in which we are reconciled to him, in which we are transformed. The Holy Spirit works in the church as a body. The Holy Spirit works in us individually. Also, we learned yesterday in chapter one that we are sealed individually. When we hear the gospel and receive the good news, that we're sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. And so that our salvation is guaranteed until we take hold of it. It said he was kind to us then. He chose us before time. He sealed us with his promised Holy Spirit. And it says here that he's in working us now to change us, to make us more like Christ, to be a people of good works, to be a people who are merciful and, and, uh, and, and that are reconcilers, bringing people together in Christ but that he is also going to show us this kindness in the, in the future age. It says that, um, that in the coming ages, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness to us through Jesus. So this is kind of an amazing chapter. Um, this book is full of promises of what God has done for us. There's nothing here for us to boast. This is a matter of not my being good or your being good, but his being good and him being in us. And so he comes in us individually and as a group, as a church, um, and, and he, he's building us into a dwelling place for God. He sees walls that need to be knocked down, um, parts of our attitude that need to be changed, sins that need to be exposed and gotten rid of, and he, and he builds up in us more uh, Christ-like, God-honoring structure within our own hearts and within the church itself. Um, I pray that you would Take some time to think about and read chapter two today um, of Ephesians on your own and just to praise God for the great mercy and the love with which he has loved us. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Love y'all. Bye.